So once you're happy with that, it should have all the settings once you hit plot, just like before. And all you should have to do is this, is plot it. And then let's just say save. I didn't fill out all my information, but um, see, and there you go. So if you wanted now to make this read a little bit cleaner, you could go back and say, man, like everything looks the same. And all I notice is my columns. So, and I don't have dashed lines for my grid. Now is when, um, I want to close this one. You go in here really close and make sure it looks right here. If it doesn't look right in your line type scale, it's not going to work. So see, I put it back. Go away. One. So see now here, I put it back to one and it looks closer to what I wanted. And then we can also go here. I actually think you can do this from your layout. So under my layers, let's say I want my doors to be thin, but my walls, I want them to display thicker. And then maybe we do... that like that now when we print again see it doesn't look any different but once you print let's just save over that there you go so see the door the walls look a lot thicker now so it only shows up on if you have that set to your settings that way. You can make it display line types, but it's kind of annoying when you're modeling because if you have a wall and it's like you want to click the endpoint of the wall, but it's displaying the wall super fat, and then you're like trying to click it and it's like you have to click in like the middle somewhere and then it's like super annoying. In Revit, there's a super easy way to turn it on and off. It's called thick lines or thin lines. And then it's actually a button at the top that's always there and you can like toggle it so that you can see how it would print and you turn it off and you just see everything like paper thin it's called like um what's that called like hairline where it's just super thin lines so that it, that makes it a lot easier to model because you can get your snaps a lot easier and sometimes like stuff will overlap and there's no way to pick it unless it's super thin but just look at it and have it so, set up so that it looks right to you. And if you want to hatch and fill in all your walls, you can do that. Um, you can have your walls display. Um, like you could go in and hatch all the walls and put that on like a wall hatch layer and tell it to print that layer half screened. So instead of printing solid black, it would print it like a gray. That's another way to do it. You could add a hatch out here. Um, and I'm just showing you this from the beginning. Once we get into actually developing it for, further, we're going to have a lot more detail in these where they actually look nice like the ones we were looking at before where you'll have hatches for the different materials. You'll have like solid black for like the cut walls and stuff like that. And so don't worry too much about it being like perfect as long as you can read it clearly. I think what I just printed is pretty close to what you should try and get which was super fast. So something like that are a little bit nicer once you have them. Because then at least we can understand kind of like how you move through the space and um, and then we can work out how can we move either this wall or maybe move this row of columns because here it works pretty good but here it's sitting in the middle of your corridor. So that's stuff that we'll start massaging together to make it so that it works nice and clean. Maybe this doesn't need a wall there so but you at least need to get something in there that we can start to develop I have a question I'm trying to uh, plot it and the lines are coming out with the color the okay so you got to change your plot style up here so when you go onto your paper space if you right click the tab and you go page setup manager you should see your layouts here and you click modify mm -hmm. 
this just saves you from having to repeat this every time you print. Um, this is the same menu that pops up when you print. Make sure it's WPDF and then up here the plot style choose either grayscale or monochrome or one of these it's going to be only black. The other way you can do it you can click this little like wrench up here so like you want to drop down there and grab one of these. You can also make a new one if you want. The, to change the settings in it you click this guy and this shows you all the colors. So remember when we had our layers, you could assign colors to the layers. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why I'm, I pick different colors, is so that you can make stuff different um, types here. Yeah. So we can actually take, remember our doors were this blue? Mm -hmm. I can make this screened 50%. And then let's save if I actually got the right color. Um, so close and now let's say plot. Let's overwrite it, say yes. There you go. See the doors are a lot lighter now. Let me zoom in so you can see. So see they're like a light gray because they're 50 percent. And see obviously here I can tell before it looked like they were aligned, but you can actually see that that line overlaps the other one mm -hmm. because they're different widths now because I made the other ones fatter. And if you want to make those like super fat so you could really see them, you could go to your layers here and let's grab that and make this like a one, maybe even more. Let's try like a 1.5. And then maybe, what else do we got? The glass, the doors. And then now we can just plot. <clears throat> there you go. See, it's probably too much. So those little changes make a big difference when you print. You guys have any other questions? Let me double check. I'm not missing anything.